Thanks for joining us here at Functional Bliss, where Audra and Jessica will guide you through exercises and wellness techniques to help you live your best life every day. It's in the name after all, Functional Bliss. Before you do anything else, click like and subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know whenever we put up a new video. To join our Blissful Gang for live Zoom classes where you can get more direct suggestions and encouragement, go to our website and sign up. Check the class description below for any equipment needs, grab your gear, and let's get started. For our first minute of work, we are starting down on our backs, getting into some windshield wipers right away. But I will say this, if you think you're in the mood for a little extra something, something throughout your workout, you can take your looping resistance band right away, put it around the middle of your feet, come down onto your back, and then start your windshield wipers. Start with just your legs, swish your knees side to side, Give a moment or two here just to kind of feel out how do your knees feel, how do your hips feel, how does your back feel, how is your energy level, and then if you want your arms to be in some particular position, maybe put them up in cactus or goalpost, add a little turn of the head, so any little bit of movement here that might feel good to you. You can go fast, you can go slow, that's totally up to you. You can reposition your legs, you can put them narrow to start and then widen them to, to finish. So any little variations that might feel good, take the time, no need to rush through this minute. If you got 30 seconds left, enjoy every little second of this windshield wiper work. And time, nicely done. Okay, now we are gonna grab that looping resistance band. And now if you didn't already have it there, you're gonna put it around the middle of your feet and it's gonna be legs long, come back down onto your back. Now for some of us, all the way down on the back is gonna feel a little bit less than optimal. So some of us might choose to prop ourselves up on elbows and forearms. That might feel like a little bit better for the low back, but we're gonna put that looping resistance band around the middle of the feet and then we're turning the feet out. So we're just rotating from the hip. So we want to imagine that we're trying to shine the tops of our thighs out to the sides of our mat. So we're gonna turn the feet out, keep your feet nice and solid, down on your back all the way or propped up on your elbows and forearms. That's just a little bit more about what feels more comfortable to your back. So if you're getting down on your back and things start screaming at you, prop yourself up, see if that makes a little bit of a difference. And then how fast or slow you go here is totally up to you, but we wanna keep it in control. So we wanna move out and move in at a similar pace. We don't want the band to snap us back in. So we wanna push the blade edges of the feet out, come back in with a sense of control. You're already halfway there. and time nicely done okay now if you weren't already there prop yourself up on your elbows and forearms if you want to stick with that looping resistance band you're going to keep one under the foot and slip your other leg in so it'll be kind of around your calf and don't worry if it gets a little bit tangled because for this one it won't matter all that much but once you've got it there we're just doing a leg lift to knee height lowering with control we're going to go 30 seconds one side 30 seconds the other side looping resistance band is not a requirement this morning, but if it feels good to have that little bit of resistance, by all means, throw it on there. We want to go nice and slow on our pace here. We want to lift it just to knee height, lower with control. A slight firmness in the belly and a little bit of integrity in the upper body, just so that the upper body stays nice and stable. Okay, when you're ready, we're going to switch to the other foot. So foot in the band, kick the other leg out nice and long, and away we go. We lift it up to knee height, lower it with control. The band is not a requirement, but if it's there and it's working for you, by all means, keep it there. Belly firm, upper body nice and stable.
10 seconds left. And time, nicely done. Okay, we're moving right on to a hip bridge. Now, if you want to keep that looping band on, go ahead and move it up so it's like a little underneath the knee joint or above the knee joint, that'll be totally up to you. And then if you also want a little something to add a little bit of load, grab your hand weights and you'll place them right at your hip points. And then how you choose to position your legs this morning is gonna be totally up to you. So maybe you like a hip width distance apart. Maybe you like a slightly wider configuration. Maybe you like the feet a little further away from the body to get those hamstrings kicking on. So choose your own adventure, how you position your legs, but work with the breath. Exhale, lift up, inhale, lower down. And that's all you got to do. Every other add-on is totally up to you this morning. So exhale, lift up, inhale, lower down. You could do that triple butt squeeze at the top, lower with control. You can just keep that looping resistance band on and keep that tension. Nice job. We are already halfway there. And time, beautiful. Okay, we're moving right into some oblique twists. If you're using that band and you want to, either around the calves or around the tops of the thighs, totally up to you. Arms are gonna come out like a little bit of a T and we're gonna start with just those oblique twists, twisting from side to side. So if you've got that band around your thighs, you're gonna keep a little bit of tension so that the legs stay in that nice even position. Rock a little side to side, just to the point where you feel those oblique muscles or those side belly muscles kick on. We got 10 more seconds of work here, and then we will drop the knees to the side and add a little bit of crunch, and then we'll come back to this again. So just know that you're gonna be here for 30 seconds, you'll move away, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, when you're ready, drop your knees all the way over to the right. Right hand on the side of the belly, left hand behind the head, and we're crunching. Crunching for 30 seconds, just staying on this side. If you like working with the breath here, you're gonna exhale as you crunch up, and inhale as you release back. And time, nicely done. Okay, right back to those oblique twists. Arms out at a T, rock it side to side with nice control. So as we dip over to one side, we're gonna feel those side belly muscles kick on and then pull it right over to the other side. All right, when you're ready, knees are gonna drop all the way over to the left. Left hand to the side of the belly, right hand behind the head, and we're crunching here. Five seconds left. And time, nicely done. Okay, roll back onto your back, grab a single hand weight. And then for me, I found the looping resistance band for this one was like kind of, I was, it just got, was getting a little tangly for me. So if you've got it on, maybe you'll choose to kick it off. That'll totally be up to you, but we're gonna find some dynamic work. So we're gonna alternate between the bottom half of the Turkish get up, but we're gonna try to make it fluid and dynamic. So don't worry about getting each little position perfect, but find that like fluidity of work. So one leg long, bent knee, arm up, look to that arm, push up into that little sit up, come back down, slide in, alternate between the two sides, but we want it to be like nice and fluid and dynamic. So no end point. We just move right on to the next position and then right back to work. So we've got one minute on the clock. You go as fast as you like, but find that dynamic work. So we want to stay fluid 
There's no end point to where we move. We just move right on to the next position. And then if you like working with the breath, you'll exhale as you come up into that sit up or crunch up position. And then always for that bottom half of the Turkish get up, we do want to look to that hand weight in the sky. So we want to keep our eyes on that hand weight the whole entire time if we can. Fifteen seconds left. And time, nicely done. Okay, now we're gonna flip over onto one side. We're gonna take it into a clam, but the little variation here is that we're going to come down a little bit lower onto the side body. That bottom hand is gonna come behind the head and so is the top hand. So we're gonna keep our hands in that position with our head slightly pushing into our hands and our hands creating resistance. And now we're working the clam. So you're gonna position your legs, Feet are gonna to stay together, top leg is gonna lift up. We wanna to try to keep our hands behind the head all the time if we can, which requires a little bit of a firmness in the belly, a little planking of the upper body. And then if you like working with the breath here, you're gonna exhale as you lift up and inhale as you lower down. Nice job. You guys look so stable. Amazing. Five seconds left on this side. And time, beautiful. Okay, we're spinning around to the other side. So you flip yourself around in a way that makes the most sense to you. Take your time, no need to rush. But then once we're there, we're coming down into that lower position, bottom hand behind the head, top hand behind the head as well. So we wanna keep that slight sense of firmness in our center, soles of the feet together, or feet together, knees lift. And we're gonna keep that little bit of pressure of the head in the hands and the hands in the head. And then for these clams, it's not so much about like how high that leg lifts, but how much control you have. So you should be using those muscles in the side of your butt. Those should be helping make this work happen. So we should feel a little work happening in the side of the glutes, but it really isn't like you're trying to get that knee to point all the way up to the ceiling because not everybody's hips rotate the same way. So go for strength over some shape or particular look of shape. and time nice job okay we're flipping back onto our back one last time and we're going to grab our hand weights this is another one of those dynamic movements so it's going to be a sit up to a chest fly so we're going to hold on to our hand weights straight out in front of the chest with a little bit of a wide bend of those elbows sit up open up into your chest fly bring it back in roll down with control but we're going to try to stay as dynamic and fluid with that movement as we can so there's no end point to where the movement stops we just want to keep moving the whole entire time we sit all the way back up open into your chest fly bring it back in roll your way back down let your breath help you with the effort so maybe that's exhaling as you come up into that sit up position nice Twelve seconds left. You got this. Mm -hmm. 
and time. Nice job. All right, as you come back up to your sit upright seated position, grab your towel or your blanket, and you're gonna get yourself set up so that you can spin around into a tabletop position. So place your folded up towel or your blanket so that you'll be able to place your shins on. We wanna go shins on, knees off. So we're gonna start by finding that tabletop position. Now, if you get there and you're like, nope, that's not for me this morning, you may choose to do everything else on this uh, tabletop position up against a wall or use your couch so that you just make sure your knees feel really happy about the work. Once you found yourself in your tabletop position, for this minute of work, we're gonna hover the knees. We're gonna keep the knees hovering the whole time if we can, and we're gonna kick one leg back. So you're just gonna push back through your heel and then push back through the other heel. We're gonna alternate between the two. You have the towel or your blanket there if you need to put your knees down to take a break in between, but the next round we will keep our shins down the whole entire time. So if you like just finding that good core work, keep the knees lifted, keep your shoulders broad, push one foot out and then the other. Check your head position. So if your head is starting to dip down, if you're looking at your knees, pull your head back just a little bit, make a little double chin and look between your thumbs the whole time. Nice job. And time, beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna bring our shins down onto that blanket or the towel. And now we're gonna grab hand weights loading up at the arms. So we're gonna take it into alternating bird dogs, but we're gonna keep our shins on the towel or the blanket just to create that little bit of cushion for the knees, but also a slight bit of instability. So we gain just a little bit more control. So shins on, knees off, grab your hand weights. We're gonna stay loaded in the top half of the body. So we're gonna go opposite hand, opposite leg. You're gonna reach out and away from each other. Bring it back in with control. We've got one minute on the clock, but take it nice and slow. So as you've got that little bit of stability, instability underneath your shins, notice your core. As you reach your leg out, notice how much firmness in your belly you need to keep that leg moving smoothly in and out. Beautiful work, you guys. Nice. Five seconds left. And time, nicely done. Okay, now from our tabletop position, you can put your weights off to the side if you want to. We're gonna alternate between three points. So it's gonna be a little bit back to your child's pose, a little bit to a planking position, and a little bit to a down dog. So we wanna hit those three points, but we're gonna go in a nice dynamic way. So that dynamic might look a little different on each of us. So you're gonna find the flow that makes the most sense to you. For me, it means coming back to child's pose, lifting up to down dog, coming forward into a plank, but you're gonna choose the little variation that makes the most sense to you or is the smoothest transition because we want that fluidity. So we wanna hit a down dog, we wanna hit a child's pose, we wanna hit a plank, but you find those three points in the most fluid way that makes what sense to you, which means you might repeat one in between. You don't have to go back as far as I go. So you don't have to make your shape look the way my shape looks. You just wanna find that nice fluid dynamic work where nothing ends. You keep going back and forth to those points without stopping your movement. Nice job.
10 seconds left. And time, beautiful. Okay, we're coming up to standing and we're gonna take it into a lunge so you can clear your towel or your blanket out of the way, but you could also keep it if you want it underfoot to create a little instability. However, one of the moments that we're gonna work on is a little bit of challenge of balance. So just be mindful if you choose to go for that big challenge of your balance, make sure that you really have good balance. Okay, so to start, we're gonna find a nice lunging position. Gaze is gonna be forward, hands touching to the back of the head. And then we're gonna to try to pull the arms back about two inches away from the back of the head. So we're touching the back of the head, move the arms and the elbows back bring it back into place. We're gonna to try to keep our head nice and stable, keep and hold that lunging position. This is the first 30 seconds of work. So all you gotta do is keep your belly firm, move those arms about two inches back, bring them back in, but we wanna to try to keep the torso stable. So it's not the ribs and the chest and everything puffing up, everything stays firm. Beautiful. three more seconds, we're gonna hold our lunge position. And now hands are gonna hold the back of the head. Thumbs are gonna grip right around that bottom of the skull. Keep your head as stable as you can and look your eyeballs up and down. Just the eyeballs move, everything else stays stable. So we hold this lunge position, hold your head in a nice steady position, breathe nice and evenly. Eyes look up and down, head stays stable, lunge stays nice and strong. And time, Woo! release your arms, release your lunge. We're gonna switch to the other side, but kind of notice. So if you were doing that holding lunge and holding your head and moving your eyes up and down, were you gripping in your toes or doing anything else to compensate for your balance? All right, so rearrange your lunge, get set up for the other side, hands behind the head. We reach back about two inches, come back, touch the back of the head. We got 30 seconds of work here. Nice and stable in your lunge. Ribs are nice and strong. Belly is nice and firm, so the chest isn't puffing up. Just the elbows and the arms reach back just a little bit and then come back to touch the head. Yes, you guys look awesome. Five more seconds of work here. All right, now hold on to the back of the head. Thumbs around that little occipital ridge of the skull. Hold your head steady. Lift your eyes up and down. Just your eyeballs are moving. So the head stays stable. Belly stays firm. Legs are nice and strong. And you're breathing nice and fluidly in and out through your nose. And time, beautiful. Okay, release your arms, release your lunge. Take a second to shake it out. Now grab some hand weights. We're gonna be lunging again, but it's gonna be 30 seconds one side, 30 seconds the other side with a load. So we're gonna think our Tai Chi lunge. All right, so step one foot slightly forward, one foot slightly back. We're gonna load up at the chest and we're gonna move forward. Let your knee go past the toe. Pull back almost as if you're doing a row, lean back into that back leg. So we're gonna find that nice fluid move, movement again. So it's nice and dynamic. There's no end point to the movement. You're gonna let your hips move with you. Let your knees move with you. Spread your toes nice and wide so there's a good solid foundation at your base. Okay, when you're ready, step your foot forward, switch your lunge to the other side, and then go right back to that dynamic movement. So get your lunge position set up, and then we're rocking forward. Arms move with you, hips move with you, knees move with you. You've got it. Nice job. And time, Woo, beautiful. Okay, kick those legs out, 
grab your heaviest weights you've got. We're gonna take it into an alternation between a deadlift and a squat. So we're gonna load up right in front of the thighs, palms facing in, little micro bend to the knee, hip hinge, come forward, find your deadlift, load up at the shoulders, sink into your squat, come back up, release your arms back to that deadlift. So we're gonna alternate between the two, go with the heaviest weights you've got, these two moves used are nice big muscles. We're getting the butt muscles to work. We're getting the leg muscles to work. We're getting the hamstring muscles to work. So go as heavy as you can. Nice job. All right, now hold it in that squat position. So sink down into your squat. We're moving right on to our next move. So we're gonna hold that squatted position, stay loaded up at the shoulders. One toe taps out and then the other. So we're gonna stay nice and low, nice and strong in the legs, nice and strong at your center. If staying loaded here is a little much for the arms and the shoulders, feel free to put those weights down, but we wanna stay in a bent knee position. One foot steps out and then the other. You guys look amazing. Nice job. You're already halfway there. And time, beautiful, come on up. Now you may choose to switch to no weights, a single lightweight or one heavy weight that you hold sideways, that's gonna be up to you. But our last minute, we're just gonna slow it down. 30 seconds one side, 30 seconds the other side. So we're gonna narrow our staggered stance. So think about lining up the big toes, bring that front knee past the toe, hollow the belly, do your little hip hinge, keep that knee past the front toe, we're gonna come up and down in a nice slow pace. We got 30 seconds on this side. You do not have to go all the way down and touch the ground. What we're shooting for here is a sense of control. And though it feels like there's a lot of setup, what's actually working really nice and hard is some of the muscles in the front of your shin, top of your foot. So we stagger that stance and then make it narrow. So we ask the feet, the ankles and the shins to kick on and do a little extra work for us. Keep that front knee past the toe, don't lose that shape. Nice job. Okay, when you're ready, switch your stance. Line up your big toes, get that narrow staggered stance. Front knee past the toe, hollow the belly. Bend forward, come back up nice and slow. Keep that front knee past your toe if you can. And time, beautiful work. All right, set that weight down and off to the side. Take a second to come up, shake out your legs. And then we're gonna step our legs nice and wide, nice and wide, nice and wide. And then once you've got your legs nice and wide, bend your knees a little bit, hinge down towards the ground. Once your hands find the ground, take a couple of smooth little side lunges, just bending one knee and then the other. Nice, one more little lunge side to side and then come through center, straighten both legs just as much as feels good. Sink your head down, take a nice big breath. Staying nice and low, walk over towards your favorite foot first, soften your nose towards your knee. Good. 
come through center, walk it over to the other side, soften your nose towards your knee. Nice, come back through center, toe heel your feet into about hip width distance apart. Once you've got those feet toe heeled in, bend your knees a lot, pull your abdominal muscles in, roll your way up nice and slow and control. Take a nice big breath, reach your arms up, grab one wrist, do that little lift and then tip over, take a little side bend, take a nice big breath. Lift up and over, grab the other wrist, lift, tip over to the other side. And then once you're there, take a nice big breath. Nice, lift back up through center, lower your arms, take a second, shrug your shoulders out. Now we're gonna grab our looping band just to get a nice shoulder stretch to finish. So we're gonna bring that looping band behind the back. So with a little bit of grip so that your arms are gonna be able to kind of move at a distance that makes the most sense to your shoulders. Once you've got a little grip behind you, bend your knees, fold over, let your arms fall away from the back of the body and let the arms spread as much as they want to. Two more breaths here. When you're ready, hands are gonna find the low back, lift from the top of your head, come up nice and slow and controlled. Take your time as you come up, shrug your shoulders out. You guys are amazing. Grab your big stability ball if you're sticking around and we, we will use our hand weights, but just, just a tiny little bit. <laughs>